All right, we are back and we're talking about money in the bank. Overall, I like the show, but there were some glaring issues there were. that we really need to cover that mm -hmm. were a lot more apparent than it was for Heat Wave. Yeah. We're going to end on a positive. So, right. <laughs> so this is a positive for me because I knew that WWE was going to take care of the situation. And the people who were saying that Sami Zayn was pulling a Hulk Hogan with beating Braun Breaker clean are ridiculous. Right. The match was excellent. Yeah. Braun Breaker looked like he, this guy is the future of this company. Oh, absolutely. His athleticism. This guy is a main eventer in the making. Oh, yeah. The athleticism that he can do. Mm -hmm. How he snaps, his moveset, his promo work, his energy, just period. It's there. That's stuff that you just can't teach. Right. And he was also taught very well. Yes. <laughs> but Sammy, he, he was the he was the face of NXT for a, a, a year. Yeah. Almost. Also, keep in mind where they were during the show. They were in Toronto. Yeah, they were in Canada. You know that Sammy Zayn is not going to lose in Canada. Right. They're not going to pull a Bret Hart. But yet. Barn Breaker got pissed off at the ref, and Sami Zayn hit the Haluva kick kind of out of nowhere. It wasn't like that big, clean right. finish. It was a mistake yeah, so from a, the young kid right it was, it was it was it was an opportune moment for sammy zane the veteran win. sammy zane so with this whole thing breaker's gonna beat sammy oh like, absolutely that's going to that's happen. going to happen now sammy is going to be defending the title against Ilya tomorrow night mm -hmm. so as of the making of this episode yes so that's going to be happening, but I think they're going to try to gear up for either a triple threat or a four-way, including Ludwig Kaiser, because mm -hmm. he's been somewhat involved in this yeah. rivalry, um, at the next pay-per-view SummerSlam yeah. in three weeks. Yep. So we have plenty of time. But I just wanted to bring up the reaction, but yeah. also just the match itself was great, and they followed it up beautifully. Yeah. So we all need to chill out, all right? This was an interesting match. I like this match a lot. Uh, the right person won was uh, Tiffany Stratton. Uh, apparently, apparently, Dave Meltzer said that this is weird in which this was the best and the worst match of the night. Like the same match was the best and the worst match of the night, according to according to a poll that he had conducted. Well, which has never happened before. Yeah, it, that's so very strange. There's there's a I don't know. I mean, did you like this match? Or did I like. I, I like. I, I like the match too. Between between the two, Money in the Banks, this one was by far the oh, best. Oh, absolutely. Um, everybody in this match looked like they could have theoretically won, and it would have mm -hmm. been fine. Um, Zoe Stark really put in some effort to make herself look like a big deal mm -hmm. here, and I'm very happy. Uh, but we got to talk about Chelsea Green mm -hmm. because, well, she's from Toronto. She was going to get cheered, but the follow up with it. People were still cheering for her. Yeah. And it's like, Chelsea's really starting to pick up some momentum mm -hmm. because of the comedy stuff that she's doing with Piper, right. who's phenomenal, by the way. I love Piper Niven. Their stuff backstage has been gold. Mm -hmm. Everybody's been laughing. I've been watching every single time that she's on screen. I've just been loving it. And... It's just great to see. Yeah. I wonder how much creative freedom they're being given for those backstage segments. I wonder. It seems a lot more authentic than it did under the Vince era. Yeah. Uh, Piper Niven was literally sitting there reading a book uh, that was called How to Start a Cult. <laughs> it was perfect because people are really starting to gravitate towards them yeah. um, as like a babyface team. Yeah. And I'm like, that just sort of small touches was perfect. Yeah. Also, Chelsea Green had a diamond studded purple neck brace. And it was just the best thing. <laughs> but I, I just loved everything. The match itself was good. Nobody looked bad. The right person won. They're mm -hmm. already sowing the seeds to absolute perfection regarding the cash in mm -hmm. uh, involving Nia Jackson Bailey. And I think the SmackDown person had to win. Yes. Because you can't really do that with Liv and Rhea. Yeah, because they already, a, you already have programs for the next couple of months with those two. Yep. That rivalry is already so in embedded into right. the zeitgeist of Raw, it would be such a weird disruption to yeah. have money in the bank and it would just totally fall flat. Right. And and of course, speaking of that, we gotta talk about the other money in the bank match we'll, too. We'll talk about that here in a minute okay. because I actually put that on the negative side. Uh, John Cena retirement. Um, I said that this was a positive, not because it is a positive, 
well, in, in the way that Meltzer's thing was like, it was the best and worst match. This is a positive and a negative. Mm-hmm. Obviously, we don't want John Cena to retire. He's one of the best ever, and he's still a draw. Yep. It's going to be a very interesting 2025, though, if he wants to achieve all of his, if he wants to achieve some of the ideas that might be floating around. Right. So he's contracted for about 40 days in 2025. He's probably going to do a lot of promo work, yep. and the physical altercations are going to be limited. Yes. Um, obviously, he's going to have big fights. He's not going to fight on every Raw, for example. Might fight unless, on unless he wants to. Unless, unless he's he like, to. unless he's like, hey, like, um, like what Kurt Angle did right. with his retirement tour. He, John Cena could do the same thing. That's true. Elevate the people up yep. a little bit, because given the rub, yep. they'll probably do it better what they did yep. with Austin Aries. They could do um, or Austin Aries, Austin Theory. Yeah. <laughs> um, so my idea is he's probably going to win a couple of titles next year. Uh, I don't want a couple of them. Um, is but but uh, we want, obviously, he's one title away from a Grand Slam in the Intercontinental Champion. Um, and that is going to be interesting because I don't know how that's going to happen. But he also is one title away from defeating um, uh, Ric Flair's 16 titles. And there is an opportunity for him, perhaps, to elevate the World Heavyweight Championship. That's true. Uh, because it is a newer world title. Um, but, again, we don't really... He's not here in Pan and Cody. But he could have a match with Cody for the title, and that would be really good. Um, he could. Um, but I see him doing more stuff on Raw. Because I think Raw is the brand that probably needs the boost, especially with its move over to Netflix. That's true. Yes. So um, I think that that is really going to help... And, and I think that, again, he's probably going to spend the majority of his time on Raw. I'm, I wouldn't be surprised on that. But I'm sure Cena can go anywhere. It's John Cena. Right. Um, but then also I want to talk about the set. Because the set was a glaring thing that I loved. Uh, people were worried about the smaller setup. On Raw and SmackDown, I think they could utilize that backsplash a little bit better. Mm-hmm. But I, I actually like the smaller they, way. They, they were in... Yeah, they were in a smaller venue, so they had to pack in as many people as possible. That's they what packed. They, they, they packed that place. What was it, like sixteen thousand people yeah. in that place, which is really good. They still yeah. had pyro. You still have everything that you want to do. The entrance is just doesn't have to be big. They make no. it look really good. Yeah. So I just wanted to point that out because I'm like, wow, Money in the Bank just visually looks, mm-hmm. even though it's not like a big deal. Literally, it felt like a big deal. Yeah, it did. So that's what I really liked about that. All right, now we got to go to the negatives. Oh, this was a weird main event. I did um, not like it very much. The fact, I don't think Cody should have been the one to have gotten pinned. No. You could have had Randy or Kevin gotten pinned, and yeah. Solo still would have looked good. Now, it took a lot to get Cody to be pinned, mm-hmm. but I think we could have had somebody else be pinned by Solo, and yeah. it would have worked no problem. Mm-hmm. This was a risk. Did it hurt Cody? No. no. But, but did it, it help Solo? That's going to be hard to say that's, right now. It, it's going to be hard to... I, I think that people still feel like Solo is too green. Mm-hmm. Um, and I can see that sentiment. I, I still think that he might be a little too green to go after such a high-profile match. But this is literally the only match that makes... This is the only route that makes sense for him. I think... Uh, I, that's the only thing that makes sense i'm I'm going to be optimistic about it uh solo has been doing very good Mm -hmm. as of late regarding this new heel bloodline uh the only other thing that i really did not like about it was that this was jacob fatu's debut Mm -hmm. uh jacob fatu did very well like the athleticism Mm -hmm. on this guy is absolute insanity Mm -hmm. but i think he should have had his first match at SmackDown mm-hmm. and in more of a spotlight mm-hmm. because he was a aftermath right. where you had he was an afterthought where you had Tonga Loa who is more than okay to do that and especially given Tonga Loa's reputation online right now with all the botches coming out mm-hmm. he really needed a showcase mm-hmm. and this would have been a perfect opportunity with multiple veterans here to make him mm-hmm. look like a million dollars. So even though this was a good match, also, I didn't like it being the main event. I didn't like that either. Uh, it should have been the world title. If they were going to do that with yeah. Punk, that should have been the main event. Yeah. 
there were just too many glaring like huh? issues. Yeah, they weren't necessarily issues. They were like, huh? Right. So that's sort of why I wanted to kick this off mm-hmm. as a negative. Oh, that was another one. Oh uh, god, this was a mess and a total waste of the men's money in the bank. Well, let's talk about this. So, with the men's money in the bank, there there really wasn't a good option. I mean, who who what would you have done with the money in the bank? I mean, with with the men's money in the bank, you really have two very established main event scenes for the foreseeable future. You really couldn't do anything until early 2025. Yeah, you could have at the least. Yeah, you could have. Solo. What if Solo Sokoa won Money in the Bank? Had all the help with the bloodline. They beat down everybody but, but, else, I, and then he goes and but, wins it. I think that would have been perfect. But I'm talking about with the current people that were in the Money in the Bank. Solo wasn't in the Money in the Bank ladder match. But he should have been in the Money in the Bank ladder no, match. No, he shouldn't have been. Yeah. Now, that would have been a waste of his his momentum right there. So, if, But if, if he won it, then he would have had big momentum. Uh, again, you have to look at the bigger picture. And... and uh, Honestly, Roman Reigns would be back before you know it. And you know that that is going to occupy a lot of people's time. It's going to occupy the world title scene for the next six months. Well, then, well then, then Solo tried to cash in. Roman Reigns screws him. And then you start that rivalry and, on a pretty but, big hit. But then you would have had the same issue that we have now with with uh, with Drew McIntyre. So but this, really, but that, but this, really, really the men's money in the bank wasn't necessary this year. Because you really have two very established world title scenes at this point in time but anyways let's talk about the match itself i did not like how they did this i i they they no. were like they they stopped the momentum looked at the entrance way it was almost like drew miscued or something right. am i the only one that was in there thinking no, about that that, that, like, that makes total sense yeah um it it's so weird it's weird for a heel to insert himself into the match as a triple threat with both men still being healthy like you would have waited for, but them both to be down, right? Just like what happened with Seth Rollins against yeah. Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns all yep. those years ago. They had a like a match decently through where they were both down and bleeding and all this stuff, and then he went and right. cashed in. Triple so it's weird for a heel to do something that maybe a babyface would have done, right? Um, but let's talk a little bit more about interferences from C- like like again. This this is all convoluted. It felt like a clusterfuck. <laughs> it, I didn't it, like it. It is. But I think that's the point that they're trying to make with this rivalry. It's a clusterfuck. I just think there are too many cooks in the kitchen. Yep. Um and there needs to be a pretty firm separation between uh Drew McIntyre and the world title, the world heavyweight. Uh, well, I think now that's the case because I- the the issue, the only issue, it's not their fault. It's no. nobody's fault. The only issue is that this rivalry has been pushed back and pushed back because of one reason. Because CM, CM Punk's Punk. injury. Right. CM Punk is not cleared to compete yet. And apparently. they're really hoping that he is cleared to compete by SummerSlam. If they do, then we have the match McIntyre-Punk perfect. Right. But as of right now, he's just antagonizing 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 and nobody can physically touch him right that's the problem right he's making everybody else look like a dork right because he's injured yeah because he's hurt right this this would i literally predicted this when cm punk got hurt Mm. i predicted that they were going to expose him too much on television where he could not be touched right because drew mcintyre is right there i'm sure drew mcintyre can taste CM Punk's gum, he is that close. Right. But yet, he cannot touch him. Why? Because he's injured. CM Punk screwed McIntyre out of the world title before this match twice. I know. And, and there, for some s- reason, he cannot touch CM Punk because he's hurt. But <laughs> anyway, so I know. That's just the way it has to go, though. Oh, my God. It, it, it just felt so messy yeah and i just did not like it if it was for maybe a different title or even the undisputed champion with an establishment fine right but this title cannot have this weird shit i know it is it's kind of weird. too hard right now right, it is and they're they're in a pickle but anyways let's talk about so let's talk about the money in the bank match period right so kind of messy it was kind of messy there was no clear like like 
for any of these guys besides Drew McIntyre, there is no reason for them to have the money in the bank. I could have literally two, literally two people, and I think it would have worked. You Jay, Jay Uso is going to join back up with Jimmy Uso and Roman Reigns to, to be the face bloodline against the heel bloodline. And then you have Chad Gable. Chad Ooh. Gable, he lost the Intercontinental title match five times. He's not really money in the bank worthy, and he really has to... Honestly, he has to fully embrace the heel, which he hasn't done. Now, uh, another issue that I see here with Chad, and I, I mean, Chad is awesome. I right. love Chad Gable. Um, but him being the money in the bank guy would have been perfect for that because then it takes a beaten down champion for him to get the title just like what Edge did originally. Right, but again, Chad Gable, he he's, would not... He would not theoretically have an opportunity to even attempt one until this whole world title situation kind of gets sorted out. Well, that's fine because you you have a whole year, 365 days between the time that you do it and the time there. Everything right now is predicated on SummerSlam. Yeah. With Punk McIntyre, with, well, now Rollins can't go for that title. But no, you can. No, you can't. Yeah, you can. He lost. No, no, they, they rescinded that agreement, though. I know. Then what the fuck was the point of the agreement? That, I, that, that just made that match worse. I don't know. <laughs> um, now, LA Knight is going for the United States Championship. Right, he's going to take that title I, off of but, off of uh, Logan Paul. And I, I know this is somewhat controversial, but I think if I was going to replace somebody with Solo, I would have taken Knight out. Yeah, because we know LA Knight's future is going to be that United States Championship. Yeah, that's, that's where he's going. Right. That's where we knew. Uh, Carmelo Hayes needed the spotlight. Andrade mm -hmm. needed the spotlight to get mm -hmm. back into the good graces. Just, I feel like McIntyre's whole thing was such a waste because you could have done it differently. Well, you could have had. I just don't think that they had. You could have. You could have had Jay with the money in the bank, and for some reason, the bloodline screwed him. You could have done that. That would have been a perfect justification of but, going against the bloodline with the people that literally screwed him. But again, that's. I can see kind of this trajectory that's going on. And it's going all the way to WrestleMania. I can, I, so. can, I can see the trajectory, but at the same time, there could have been other things where the men's money in the bank wouldn't have felt so wasted so quickly. And I but, think but, 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 and I'm going to do this as a final thing. <laughs> if you had, if, if the money in the bank was on anybody else and it just sat there for eight months stagnant, you would have lost the momentum of that Money in the Bay contract. Damien Priest had it for 218 days. Yes. And <laughs> again, there was there was that clear trajectory. But again, I, I digress. <laughs> Let's move on. We're going to talk about Heat Wave. Yes, we are.